Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. It's a Thursday, uh, which, no, it's not, it's a Tuesday. No, it's a Thursday. What day is it, Michael? Thursday. It's a Thursday. I've just come back from Alakazam. I've literally just walked in the door uh, from Alakazam. I spent three days filming and uh, yeah, I've come back. I've Thursday. pulled you off the sales desk and I know, which that's, why this, that's why this uh, mat test is going up late because I've had an incredibly busy week. But welcome yes. back to the uh, matchmentary where we're turning right, uh, Matt into a magician well you're already a magician but we're turning into a good one um ish now i was at uh, the house of secrets last week with Ryland. he was doing his show russ brown is very excited about having you there um the I don't know the, the co-promoted 50 percent ryan and 50 percent matt cluley extravaganza at the <laughs> house of secrets <laughs> you know tomorrow the house of secrets next year on tour you and Ryland on the road Screw that. I'm not spending weeks on a coach with him. <laughs> It'd be the Matt and Ryland show for about 70 miles. And then I'll get sick of him. And you'd find him on the hard shoulder of the motorway sitting there on his switch. Yeah, but then you'd have to do the show on your own. <laughs> I'd rather do that than travel the UK. You can't with him. get rid of the talent. <laughs> Whipping, wiping his bogeys on everything. It's fucking disgusting. He can be. He can be. But he's 11. Last time I had him in my car, from here to Blackpool, I had to empty all the rubbish out the back of the car with a bin bag. That sounds about right, yeah. Try living with him. <laughs> Unbelievably messy, kid. I've never known anyone so messy. Yeah. <laughs> we were at the uh, the House of Secrets and uh, Russ Brown, when Ryan had finished his last show and he was packing away, he's like, are you going to tidy backstage this time, Ryan? Because every no. time you come, it looks like a bomb's hit it. Yeah, yeah. He's just... <laughs> I wonder where he gets it from. I have no idea. <laughs> Sarah. Sarah. It's Sarah. She's so... Done with that. Done with that. Done with that. It's Done with that. Yeah, it's Sarah. I'm telling you. It's yeah. Sarah. It's Sarah. Anyway, people don't want to know about Ryland and how messy he is. What they want to know about is you. Now, last week, I set you a task. I've not really had much to do with Matt this week. I've been busy. It's been a it's been bliss. really nice week. It's been amazing. <laughs> but it's been so quiet in I, this office. It's ridiculous. No, too quiet. Mike but, was checking himself at one point. He was like, and I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, have I gone deaf? There's like no noise in the office <laughs> at all. It was so quiet. Or was that Jack? That one of them was doing that. It was so quiet. Exactly. You need that hustle bustle that I provide. You need that up and up, up, up the ziggurat lickety split. Fucking chaos. Really That's what here. you need. Chaos. A little bit of chaos. I'd like to think that if I was a uh, a Greek god, I'd be Loki. Does that mean nothing to you? No. You're so uncouth. <laughs> so uncouth. Don't know. Anyway. Oh, hold on. Uh, my hat. Somebody was asking, apparently, about my hat. Well, it's, uh, it's a hat that's the, from the Cherries deck. Yeah. Um, Bo, <clears throat> Bo from Murphy's Magic gave it to me at Blackpool Yeah. Um, in February. Um, so I don't think you can buy them. No, you've got one. ryland has got one. Thea's got one. Yeah. I don't yeah, know how yeah, many yeah. people have actually got one. Uh, well, he had like a stack of them. And then he came over to the desk and he went, oh, you wear hats. Hmm. I was like, oh, cheers, mate. So he just gave me one. But I don't I don't think you can buy them. I think they're a limited edition just for Blackpool. I think they were. But check with Murphy's. 50 quid, you can have this one. I'm joking. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> just like nobody cares about Ryland, nobody cares about your hat. It's a nice hat. It is a nice hat. I agree. But what they want to know is, I've not been here all week and I set you a task. And the task was, I needed a full outline of your 45-minute show based on everything that we talked about where are we with that i see a notepad i'm only i'm winding you up it's done good because th from this week on things get hardcore and what i mean by that is up until now we've been sitting in this office having nice little chats and teaching you how to i've been deep throating balloons in front of friends you've been sitting in this office kind of my job I've been gagging on rubber in front of a burger van. <laughs> yeah, but now <laughs> we're going we're going a next level. Now we're going next level. As of next week, I've got some crazy shit for you to do to get you ready for Blackpool. I have come up with some of the most insane, ridiculous challenges that are going to get you to where I need you to be, Matthew Cluley. So this is the last week where I'm going to sit here and have a nice little chat. Talk to me about what's going on, because as of next week, it's bear traps and bongs. 
And bongs? Are we even, getting high? And I'm not even going to tell you what I mean, but bongs are in your future. We're getting high? Wow. Amazing. Tell okay, me. so this isn't just me, by the way. I don't want to, you know, take credit for having done all of this, but that there's a lot of stuff written down in this book. Um, but this is basically my show. Okay. So I've had a lot of help from friends, um, very willing friends that are happy to spout ideas at me left, right and centre, which is crazy. I spent about, I don't know, two hours or something on the phone to Drew Perry a couple of nights ago, just mm -hmm. finalising this and finishing it off. He came up with some amazing ideas. Drew is like just a vat of insane ideas but one of the things i was doing at uh, alec and sam is i was co-hosting drew's next uh i know you were project yeah yeah drew's awesome he's so nice um and he's helped me out loads and loads of people have helped me with this so anyone that's had any input onto this and helped me in any way shape or form i really appreciate it and anyone that's got feedback or would do things differently or got any other ideas put them in the comments on this because this is i think this is pretty cool i think it's yeah. going to be a good show i think but if you've got any other ideas or anything, fire them at me. Um, so, going with your idea about my journey through magic. Oh, you like that idea? Yeah. Everyone that I've spoke to seems to kind of like that idea. I think it's going to work well for yeah. this kind of show. Don't get a big fucking head about it. Well, so, I'm a genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a genius. So we've gone... I'm, do you know what? Out of everybody in the magic community, alive or dead, I'm the most important. I should be a national treasure. Not I should be an international treasure. You know what? David Copperfield should step aside and let me manage the fucking moon. I'm when you just... say treasure... Treasure? That's me. Do you mean sunk? To me, I am to the... I am the lifeblood. <laughs> I am I am the heart. You should strap some breeze blocks to him, sink him to the bottom of the Atlantic. <laughs> I am... And then he can be treasure, can't he? I am the heart and soul of the magic community. It's me that pumps the lifeblood around this whole community. If it wasn't for me, it would all crumble and die. Genuinely, the, the thing that draws people to you the most is your overwhelming modesty. Well, I like to be humble. <laughs> It's difficult because when you're this good, yeah, I'm, yeah, it's difficult, it's difficult okay. because when you're this good, like like denying that is lying. But I do like to try and remain humble, despite how amazing I am. What I'm just talking about how good I am. Are you done? Oh, it's about you this time, isn't it? Yeah, carry on. So it's not about so, me. So tell me, it's about the show and the people that have helped me. Uh, that's uh, how I'm giving credit so, to yes, everyone that's yes, helped me. Yes, and and, and being appreciated. And the whole and structure of the people. show was my idea. So please continue with my no, idea. No, the structure of the show. You had like a little tiny. Oh, why would you do about your journey through magic? That was it. Everything else has come from me and the people that have well, helped me. It's a lot better me. than where you were at at the time, which was, let's talk about our senses. Oh, let me do a trick about being deaf. That'll be good, won't it? Oh, wonderful. Friends, senses, friends. I've been a magician for a year. <laughs> I don't think that was a bad concept. That's, it's, yeah, it wasn't a bad concept 15 years ago when it was. Anyway, I told you we should have filmed this while he wasn't here. <laughs> I told you we should have just filmed this, this bit about me talking about my show while he wasn't here. No, I'm, I'm interested. How many times have I said that this week? I'm interested. Many. I'm interested. Tell me about my idea. Oh, your, your show to do with my idea. Carry on. Love it. It's great. Haven't we missed him <laughs> while he's been away? It's been hell. Mm. <laughs> really missed him. I've missed you. Yeah. I really have. Are you going to shut up now and let me do this? I've missed you more than my dog. That's a lie, I didn't. But carry on. I never miss you more than your dog. I love your dog. Um, <clears throat> right. So, we're going to start off with my journey through magic. Yes. And uh, bear in mind, when I walk out on stage, there's not going to be anything else there, really. There's going to be a couple of things set up mm -hmm. that we can't set up during okay but the main thing is just going to be this like you know the big like pads that flip over it's called the flip chart flip charts there's going to be one of those on stage and okay. it's just going to have april 1982 okay when i was born okay i didn't know um, that yes you did i didn't april the what that's my month it's 15 days after yours oh i didn't know that yes you did i'll have to remember that in april next no year. you won't probably not carry on so April 1982. Is this an invisible flip chart? On the invisible flip chart right Okay, here. got okay. it. Okay, I'm not going to go, oh, my name's Matt. And I'll... No, right. of course not. No, right. I just want the overview. April 1982. No, yeah. no I'm not going to do that during the show. Oh. It's just going to be April 1982. This is when I was born. Okay. So and you're not going to say hi or anything? I might say hello. Depends. Right, okay. Uh, flip the flip chart over and it's going to go to like June 1990. 
And then June 1990 was the first time that I saw Paul Daniels on the TV, who was the first magician, I think, from memory, that I ever saw. Ever. Did you like it? I did, actually. Quite Not a lot. lot. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so... That was the geekiest joke ever. <laughs> and we both What's did a proper geeky, little you knew shitty it. giggle at it. Oh, God. Um, I'm turning into you. one of you. <laughs> okay, so um, I've actually got it down. I did like it quite a lot. I've actually got that bit down on the thing. Um, so uh, Drew told me about that. Um, so Paul Daniels was the first person that I saw, first magician that I ever remember seeing. And the one thing that stands out about Paul Daniels other than being a young boy and seeing Devin McGee, was um, the chocolate routine he did. You know which one I'm talking about, don't you? Of course, of course. No, 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 Matt. I've never heard of the Paul Daniels chocolate routine in my but life. Everyone will have heard of that, right? No, no, I've never heard of it. Everyone will have heard of that. I'm sure everyone else has, but I've never heard of it. <laughs> everyone will have heard of that, right? Yes. So yeah. everyone will know the Paul Daniels chocolate routine. Of course. So I is. thought it would be cool. Bear in mind, I've got till February. If I did... The Paul Daniels chop cut routine, word for word. Now that is an incredible idea. I love that. that was Drew. Great... Drew came up with that. It's, it's not my idea. No, Drew I love that idea. It's an incredible idea. Chop cup, great way to open a show because it's quick, it's visual. Yeah. The chop cup routine that you're talking about is iconic. There is only one small, tiny problem that I can foresee. What? It requires a level of sleight of hand skill that you currently don't possess. I will and have. Not so by me being an ass about it. You can't do that routine. Right I will now. by February. Hmm? By February, I'll be able to do that. Okay. I will have Paul Daniels' chop cup routine done by February. This is the matchumentary, Matt. That's not good enough. So next week on the matchumentary, Matt is going to be performing flawlessly the Paul Daniels chop cup no, routine I'm not. in an effort to get ready for his show. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, not in is. a week. I yes, can't do that in a week. You've got to do that, Matt. I can't do that in a week. Yes, you can. I can't. You can. There's no way I'm going to have that down in a week. Yes, you will. I don't even have a chop cup. I can fix that. I'm not. Have you, and also, we've got a Have room... you seen the routine? No. I'm not. I might have like <laughs> 30 seconds of it down by it's, next week. I could probably. I'm not going to have the whole thing done I by could next probably week. do that chop cup routine if you just show me the video once, give me half an hour. I could do that. Yeah, but I can't. You can. I'm not going to have that done Stop in a week. Stop being a defeatist, Matthew. You can. In a week. In a, you can. Oh, fuck me. I'm not, I don't want to say anything else. That's it. That's the show. No, Bye, not. everyone. Open it up. Have a good, we'll see you next week. No, keep going. Next week he's doing the match. Uh, uh, the whole point of this matchumentary is to watch your progress <laughs> from fuck zero me. to hero. To watch your progress from a jobbing close-up magician to an international superstar. Fucking headlining international superstar. <laughs> okay, a Blackpoolian superstar <laughs> headlining, well, okay, one of the acts. Not headlining of, anything. One of the two acts on the show at the House of Secrets over the Blackpool Magic Weekend. We need to see the even. We can't just go, right, okay, so I'm going to do the pull down your top rep routine. Fast forward to February. Got it. We need to see your progress. <laughs> the whole point. Am I right, Michael? Come on. Yeah, the whole but to have shut the whole fuck up. The whole point of this. By next week. Stop talking. Is when not, my hand goes up, your mouth goes a, shut. <laughs> a, I'm not your kid. <laughs> B, that's what happens if your hand goes up. <laughs> so, anyway. Wait. Oh, right. fuck me. The whole point, Michael, don't you agree? The whole point is to see the evolution of the act, right? We can't just wait until it's really good yeah, and then just look at it. Week. We're going to see where it's at in a week's time. We can see where it's at in a week. I'll by give you, you that. By, we'll you, see where it's by at you performing it for Which everybody. Which will be nowhere. We're going to have him, so, so... But we can see where it's next, at in a week. Next week. Next week. We won't see you do it. We'll see you fuck it up. Yes. Yeah. You will see me. If I was to do this that in a week's time, I'll show it you in a bit. And just for fun, can we also deep have you deep throat a balloon again? Sure. Great. That's just that's my own personal amusement. <laughs> okay. Carry right. On. So so far we're two and a half minutes into the show, and it's taken us about twenty minutes to fucking describe. So. <laughs> I don't know how to respond. Neither do I. Sorry. <laughs> Neither do I. I haven't got a clue. Um. Walk out on stage. April. 82, flip yeah, it over, yeah, June 99, yeah, Paul Daniels, yeah, chop cup on stage. Okay, okay. going to do the chop cup routine that Paul Daniels does, hopefully word for word. Yep. We'll see what happens. Um, flip the flip chart over again, mm -hmm. and it's like September 94, or whatever year it was that he came out. Yui Gala. 
Okay, I thought you were going to say like you lost your virginity and it was going to be condom magic. 94. How old are you? I was been? 12. Early start? It's a couple of years after that. Could we use that in the show? I'm just thinking you could do the... the, the <laughs> I didn't lose... How's... No. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm being a dick. Carry on. And I've spoken to Go Wayne on. Goodman. Really? Yeah. Okay. I was with him today. I know you were. And um, I've got something for the fork bending stuff. Okay. That Yuri Geller does. So that's going to be like... You could seconds. just learn liquid metal. Oh, I've spoken, spoken to Wayne. We've already saw it. It's in hand. Don't worry. Um, but, like, liquid metal's awesome. I'm sure it is. That's the fork bending I do. Well, that may be the one that Wayne... I don't know what Wayne called it. Okay. But it's... Yeah. So, got some of that to do. Then I'm going to flip it over again. Okay. And then it was like the next wave of magicians started to come through. And I think the first one I ever saw was Blaine. Okay. And he was a completely different style. You've got like Blaine, Yuri Geller. You know what I mean? Completely different styles of magic. Completely different styles of people. And he was like captivating i loved david blaine when he first came out i watched everything he ever did and the most famous thing he ever did which caused the most amount of media and whatever was that little levitation thing that yeah. he did so as a joke i'm just going to turn around and do that and then carry on that's david blaine done um that'll be another flip chart thing and then it comes over again be careful of that why that's the sort of thing that you could get in trouble with with the magic community why so the little thing where he did stood on one toe yeah. It's called the Belducci levitation. Yeah. And a lot of people actually use it in their show. Oh, do they really? Like, they really do. When it's done properly, it looks incredible. Now, what Blaine did... This, I was thinking about when, when, learning can it I just Can I just explain? When Blaine... Because I'm serious now. When Blaine did it, um, obviously, because you're doing it on TV, you want to get, like... So, he, felt, he did it for real. So, when Blaine did it on the audience... He did the Belducci levitation for real, but he had them stand behind him, mm -hmm. right? And then what happened is they filmed it from the front to get their reactions, but because they were filming it from the front, it didn't look very good. So that's when they edited it so that it would look better on TV because he was doing it on TV. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like, the, the point is, this, that, that, that Belducci levitation, it's not a joke. Amongst, it, it, yeah, okay, it's, and it's it's one that a lot of magicians know, and it got exposed at the time an awful lot on the internet. Yeah, but I know I could give you that, at least three people that do it in their show, and and if they were sitting in an audience watching you, or they saw a video watching you, and you just gave it away as a gag, I don't think people would like that in the middle of a magic show. I just assumed that everybody now knew who it did. Magician Have you ever seen not? it done properly? No, it's great. It's really good. Well, I was just I was thinking about doing it properly. Because the camera's going to be in one position in the well, thing. Can, so can I, I can do it to the camera. Can I make a suggestion? But I'm pretty much in the round at the House of Secrets. Okay, can, I, can, I, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Okay, why don't you do a... Re people won't remember the actual levitation that, uh, that Blaine did, right? They won't remember exactly what it looked like. Down in the warehouse, we've got two one-man levitations that are both awesome. We've got the Magellan levitation, which is where you bring a cloth and, and it looks like you levitate and you drop the cloth and you're levitating. And you've got In Flight by Nick Einhorn, where you've got a cardboard box, which you show and it's complete. And Paul Daniels did this in his show, actually. And you, you stand inside the cardboard box and then you levitate up, but you lift the box up and they can see underneath the box and everything. It looks really, really good. So we've got two one-man levitations that you could kind of do to music if you wanted to down there in the warehouse that you could go and take and learn. Why don't you consider okay, actually do doing that a proper levitation rather than making a joke about it? Um, I wasn't gonna. I didn't want to. Like... No, no, that's what you said. And I'm not having a go. By the way, I was joking around earlier on. I'm being deadly serious now. I'm trying to give you some advice. Rather, rather than making a gag about a really good levitation, I agree. The Belducci levitation would not work on the House of Secrets stage. Yeah, because there's but, people all around. Yeah, but In Flight by Nick Einhorn, that's the one that I'd suggest you do. It's at the back of the warehouse. I know exactly where it is. It's just behind Ryan and stuff to the left. It's it's a great levitation. I did it in my illusion show for years when I first started. Haven't okay. done it for a while, but we've got it down there. And you can have a look at the Belducci levitation. Not Belducci. You can have a look at the Magellan levitation. You can go and have a look at the in flight. And you can decide if one of those floats you about. Floats not about. Like what I did there. <laughs> no, but I'm serious. That, that I think would be better and also would be more impressive to an audience than a throwaway gag. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't want to offend anybody. And if people actually use it, I wasn't aware that it was the thing that people actually use. Yeah, I mean, 
it, it, not everybody uses it, but I mean, I've done it. I've done it at the actual festival. People are, like when you know when you do those summer fairs in the summer, and like you're just walking around and there's loads of people all over the place. And yeah, you, yeah, I've done it a few times in places like that where I've got a group of people and they go, "Can you float?" and I just walk forward and I do it and it looks great. Okay, um, and then after Blaine, the next person that I remember seeing, when I mean, there was a few guys around, obviously, but the main person that came out was Chris Angel, and I remember when Chris Angel came out because he. He, his shows were never shown in the UK. But Mind got, Freak. Yeah, yeah Mind was. Freak was never shown in the UK. No, it wasn't. But I remember watching all of them, so I don't know where I saw that. Might have been on YouTube or something? Maybe. And I, I did live in the States for like six years. Okay, so that could have been it. But. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I remember seeing everything that Chris Angel ever came out with. And he was like, he looked like a rocker. Like at the time, that's how I kind of dressed. And I was a yeah. rocker and with tattoos and piercings everywhere and yeah, long yeah, hair. Yeah. And he was just like, oh my God, this guy's yeah. fucking amazing. And I remember when I went to Vegas uh, with a bunch of my mates, because one of my mates was getting married in Vegas. And we all went out there and I dragged them to the, oh shit, what's Chris Angel's hotel? Uh, the Luxor. The Luxor. Well, it was back then when you would have watched yeah, it. Yeah, it was then. And I dragged everybody to the Luxor to go and see Chris Angel and his bike was there and he had all of his memorabilia in there. Do you remember the illusion with his bike? Yes, yeah, yeah. So on the way in, there's tons of bikes. There's like eight, one, nine, ten, eleven, twelve bikes. All of his bikes are like in display cabinets. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the one that was up on the top, the heart, the yeah, and then, and then like, this. Is, that, 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 I'll never forget this when I went to watch uh, Chris Angel. So all of the bikes are on display when you go in, and then just I think it was just before the first half, the interval. You get somebody up on stage, and they're not stooge, and he says he brings up on the screen behind him all of his bikes, and he says you've probably seen them on the way in, and he has them pick one. And, uh, and and they have a free choice of any one. And they pick one, and then they go stand to one side, and he, br he brings up a cloth, and he produces that exact bike on stage. Nice. And then when they walk out for the interval, that bike is now missing from the display cabinets. And I remember speaking to uh, a magician. Now, this didn't come from him directly, but it came from somebody who knew him. And he was like, do you know how that works? I'm like, no. And he said, well, the theatre's rigged out so that when they select one, a button's pressed and it goes from the display cabinet across and then gets ready to be pushed into that's a production pos a position. Now, I don't know if that's true. The illusion was, like, incredible. I loved it. And I loved the fact that when they walked out, that bike was missing. And then the guy said, yeah, that's how it works. I'm like, fucking hell, that's incredible. That's quite a setup, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we're talking about Chris Angel and Vegas. And that was when I started to get into kind of, like, seeing the first kind of, like, mentalism kind of stuff as well. I know he was, like, a big, like risk taker and illusions and stuff but he did a I think the biggest thing he ever did was set himself on fire yeah he's done all kinds of stuff in he he was a lunatic yeah but so have you seen you on fire no oh. um but then I was going to because are was, you going to jump out of a helicopter uh I, I would love to jump out of a helicopter no without a parachute oh no um so then I was going to go because it's gambling and stuff as well I was going to go into psychology <laughs> yeah because when you think Chris Angel you think coloured bags on glasses it's gambling though isn't it Okay, yeah. It's gambling. I'm going to bet 50 quid to somebody that they can get... Honestly, I, I, I don't see the link that much between... I really think that's quite a weak link. Up until that point, I'm totally on board with this. I think that's a bit of a weak link. I think if you were going to do anything at that point, when you think of Chris Angel, you'd be doing like the Blades or something like that or something dangerous. That's what he's known for. He's not known for fucking... Colourful yeah, bags on, because on, on I'm, glasses. I was in Vegas when I saw it. Yeah, I've got fine. That kind of but, but link there's to lots him of other yeah, but there's lots of other magicians and... in Vegas as well. Like if you were going to do that, I would do something more dangerous, like single needle or blades or or, or hook. Hook would be a good one. Hook by uh, Casey yeah, that you like say hook. that you do. Where I do hook you know, all the time. Well, hook. I believe Angel's actually done that on TV. Has he? I might be wrong, but he's done stuff like that. That feels more like a... Because like, Hook is very similar to uh, colour psychology, really, when you think about it, in that they yeah. have a choice and they end up making the correct choice. Yeah, but yeah, honestly, yeah. you tell me, what's more Chris Angel to you? Yeah, Chris, Hook would be Hook more Chris Angel. A, I honestly... And I'm not being a dick here. This, again, at the beginning, I was like joking around. I'm, being, I'm trying to help you here. I'm being serious. I love what you're doing here, and I love that you're linking it into stuff that you've done throughout that's got you into magic but honestly i i put hook there instead it works really well on stage you can even make hook with much longer threads and you can actually hand the hook that one of the threads out to a member of the audience step backwards and then tell them to pull and it becomes really dramatic and looks great okay 
yeah we'll have a look at that um and then from there going into uh being a mentalist and obviously i'm on stage being a mentalist at the time and using my like skills that i've got from being on stage but then walking onto a stage as a magician and realizing how difficult and how different it is being a magician on stage to anything that i've ever done um but how far I've come to be able to walk on stage as a magician yeah, and then yeah, yeah. wanting to share that kind of experience with somebody in the audience. Yeah. So just picking somebody in the audience, but like hopefully there's not a magician, if I can find someone that's not a magician, uh, or someone that hasn't got stage experience as a magician and bringing them up and then doing Cue the Magic, which I love the idea of doing that. I think it's brilliant. I agree. By right, Angelo Carbone. No, I love Cue the Magic. Yeah. I, I've done it for years in my act. And I think that would be However, great. However, can I make another suggestion? Up until this point, you've linked every trick into a magician. Yeah. I would link you the magic into Wayne Dobson, because I know you've seen Wayne Dobson. I know you said I have that, seen Wayne Dobson. And I know you, you, you said that you watched him as a kid. Cue the Magic was based in part on... Wayne. Wayne was the first person that came up with this concept of something called teacher trick. And if you haven't seen it, you should go look at the performance of it. It's brilliant. It's on YouTube. Where he would sit down with somebody and he'd say, hey, I'm going to teach you a trick. And he'd say, repeat after me. Um, hey, my, uh, hey, welcome to my show. Uh, and the guy would go, welcome to my show. I'm going to show you an amazing trick. I'm going to show you an amazing trick. And Wayne would go, go on then. And it's, it's stuff like that. But it, 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 it was basically what Cue the Magic is. But what Angelo did is he took Wayne's kind of concept of, of, of teacher trick, put it on cue cards, which is much easier to follow for the average performer that hasn't got Wayne's ability to be able to do incredible <laughs> performances. And, and and built the whole thing into Cue the Magic. It was a totally different method. But it would totally make sense to link that into Wayne Dobson because Wayne was the person that put that iconic presentation together. Okay, cool. Um, and then going from um, more, go, like obviously explain that I'm going more into mentalism and really getting into the mentalism side of it. But then being a magician and being a mentalist, I was kind of what I've done since I've started is pull my experiences from being an actor um, into my performances of doing mentalism, which mm -hmm. is why I think they're going down so well at the moment. And then going into Bane by Jamie Dawes, because obviously I'm a murder mystery actor. Yeah, yeah. That's well, we've already talked about that. Living. That makes and, total sense. Yeah. And yeah. then and then the last one would be um, going into um, Alex Marsh's. Uh, off his new download, his fourth dimensional uh, telepathy routine. Okay. As like a strong mentalism piece to finish the show. But why not talk about Alexander Marsh? And talk, yeah, talk about Alex and well, people Alex like Mac Alex. Alex McAleer. Oh, Alex McAleer. Yeah. I don't know if it's Alex McAleer. Is it Alex McAleer and then Alexander Marsh? Or is it the other way around? It's one of the Alexander two. Alexander McAleer and Alex. Yeah, yeah whatever. Um, but yeah, talking about people like Alex and Simon and Mark Paul and all of these people that I've learned from since I've started, all of these people that I've had the opportunity to speak to and interact with and ask questions to and be able to put this show together based off of the information that I've had from these incredible mentalists that I've had a chance to meet. Um, and just doing that. And that is Alex's kind of routine, but I don't think... And is that the close to the show? Um, other than having the um, little reveal going all the way throughout. Oh, that you talked about with Mark Paul? Yeah. Okay. And what does that end up being? Um, I think that's... We're still working on that bit, to be fair. I think that's going to end up being the date. Because obviously we're working on different dates as yeah. we're going through. Uh, and I think I'm going to have it as the date. Of Using Black Toxic Hole. Plus using Mark's thing and then the last time I flip it over, so the last date that comes up is actually going to be the date that we are in Blackpool. Okay. So it'll be the, the last... I'll have the reveal done from the cards that they've picked out, mm -hmm. have that as the reveal for the date, mm -hmm. and then have the same date on the last flip chart that I'm pulling over. Cool. Um, the only other thing that I would say, I mean, that's a really good show, genuinely, great. Uh, I made a couple of comments there that I think would be worth doing. Mm -hmm. The only other thing that I'd say is uh, the House of Secrets has got two television screens on the stage raised yes, up. Yes, it has. And um, your music cues, uh, well, well, also you'll need to think about music and everything, you know. Uh, but your your music and your video can be controlled um, in Q Labs. It's got the whole Q Labs set up. 
and I will be there so I can help you with that if you want me to as well. But the point is, what would be really nice is as you're talking about each one of these magicians, videos are just playing in the background of that particular magician as you're introing it, mm -hmm. not during the trick, but as you're bringing up hey, now in blah, blah, blah data, you got Chris Angel, and you've got, for people who don't know who it is and therefore have no frame of reference and therefore yeah. don't have an emotional attachment to it, I think having those videos in the background would be good. And when you're talking about Bane and you're talking about you as a murder mystery performer, if you've got some video of you just doing that sort of stuff or rehearsing that sort of stuff or something, and that's playing in the background, I just think that would make it more of a polished, yeah, yeah, that's cool. polished show, really. Yep. Um, yeah, it's good really good yeah i'm actually quite i'm quite happy with it i think it would be now i need to get practicing and rehearsing it and write a script for it but i think that i mean thank you again for everyone that's helped me and giving me advice and stuff you're welcome. i really appreciate it you're welcome to I'm, a giver. I'm a giver i'm a giver helped, i'm a giver i really appreciate it let's be honest it. nobody's helped just me it's only me it's only me you're welcome I'm a giver. I'm a giver. You're a taker. I will give and you can receive. It's fine. My knowledge into your brain. So I'm not getting any credit at all for that. No, it's all me. Why do I bother? If this show goes incredibly well and you smash it, it was my guidance, mentorship and, and ability to lead from the front. If it dies on its ass, it's all you for being shit. So is that... God. Is there any upside to me know, doing this I, at all? I, when I pull this shit, do you think people <laughs> is there actually... any upside to me I, doing When this? I say this shit, do you think people actually <laughs> believe the crap? Yes. I, no, they can't do. People aren't that stupid. But we are dealing with the magic community, so probably. Um, what? Well, I'm joking again. I'm not getting involved. <laughs> the views of Craig Betty are not mirrored by myself. Or Mike. They are. They or are. Jack. They are. They are. They are completely. They are solely the views and opinions of Craig Petty. I, uh, I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. So, it took a lot of time, that did. Yeah, I can tell. You worked hard. So next week, because um, obviously you did that in a week and you did great. So next week, I want to see the Chop Cup. We're going to start off... Um, but through the week, we can get some video of him trying it and, 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 and trying to do the script. We can get some video. We'll get you in here for a bit as you're practicing it. And then next week, we'll have you perform it. And uh, and if it's where I think it needs to be, we can have you out on the streets doing some in... Uh, we'll, we'll take you to the burger van again. Uh, that'll be fun. Doing the chop cup in the burger van. How am I going to do a chop cup in a burger van? We'll give you the little busking table from down the warehouse and you can just go up and go, Hey, do, table. Do, 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 do. Do, do, done. And then you can take your little table to uh, next door to uh, and then Freddy's and then I anywhere. Can't go and see Tam after the next couple of days. He's going home. Why? Where? Where's he going? What's home? Zimbabwe. He's from Zimbabwe? Yeah. What's he going? What about his place? Going home for Christmas. It's not Christmas? It's not even December? Well, he's going home, like I said, in a few days, I think. What a lazy sod. So he's closing now? I think so. Just for a month? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Fair play to him. Don't know why you do that. He told me I can go with him next Remember, year. Remember to get away from no, no, you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, you're still working on Christmas Day because those people are going to be wanting magician. They're going to want to book a magician on Christmas Day. We've already got bookings for Christmas Day. I know we have, but people might ring up on Christmas Day. They did last year. Do you remember? Last year, I was like, I'll cover the phones on Christmas Day. And I spent the entire Christmas Day answering phones. Yeah, you people... said you'd cover the phones on Christmas Day because you didn't think anyone was going to call. Well, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> experience is what you win when you lost. I lost. I've won the experience. You're up on Christmas Day. I'm not. I don't do cover. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. It's Monday. Fuck off. If it's not raining, I'm out on my bike Christmas. Thanks very much for joining us once again right here on the Match of Entry. Please join us next week where uh, Matt will be performing the Paul Daniels Chop Cup routine flawlessly. No, I won't. The opening to his show nope. is going to be the Chop Cup routine and yep, you're going to see true. it live here next week. And it's, of it. and it's going to look amazing. No, it's not. It'll look amazing. It won't. Yes, it will. I have faith in you. It won't. I have more faith in you than you do yourself. If you don't think it'll look good, it won't look good. No, I just know what my calendar's like between now and next week. Yeah, it's fine. You've got plenty of time. Right. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. Say bye to everyone, Matt. <laughs>
silent but deadly. <laughs> we'll be back next week. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Seriously, you'll be able to do it for next week. It's fine. No, I'll, I'll, I'll have a go. I'll do some of it for next week. I'm not going to have it down word for word flawlessly for next week. Yes, you can. He does about 150 words a minute. I know. In that fucking He's thing. northern. No... Huh? He's northern. Yeah, but... You can do that. It's just a script. I can do it script. and will you know do it, do, but I'm not going to get it done do. in a week. You know what you should do? You know what you should do? You should get Michael to go and rip the video off YouTube run it through a uh, uh, th th that software that we've got that will literally uh, take all of the words and put it as a, uh, what do you call that, Michael? Um, where you can take the words and it turns it into a trans tra transcript. transcript. And then you can take that transcript and you can print it off as a script and then you've got an actual Can you script. do that? Yeah, or we could just take the voice and just make AI Matt say it. Then you don't have to say anything. But I've got to do it live. Yeah, you just hit play on the people secret see button my under the isn't team. Moving. <laughs> hey, people will see that my mate's not moving. Oh, I've got a great idea. Can we make an AI mat that does the shortcut routine, like including a little <laughs> video? And we'll do real mat versus AI mat and see who does it the best. Can you really do that? Not the that mean? fucking thing. <laughs> like, print it, like, get a yeah. script. Yeah. yeah you, so you that's see? real. You can do that. Yeah. That's <laughs> bless. This is why you work in sales. Yes, that's real. It's a very easy thing to do. You genuinely you can yeah. do. Yeah. Can you? You can just you put do? a video in it. It gives you a transcript of everything that's said. And then and you, you can just get then print that out print like a word off. document. Yeah. Can you do that for me? I can't. You can. What do you mean? I, I, no, I can't. <laughs> yes, he'll do it for you. It's fine. Yeah. We're yeah. Here to help. I'll tell Jack to do it. Does it me. tell Jack to? Do it? Yeah. I don't care who does it. <laughs> does it take long? No. No. This is yeah. a simple thing uh, to do. Just do that then. Why is he so shocked by this? I didn't realise that was the thing. <laughs> I, didn't, I can't figure out. If, I still can't figure out if you're lying or not. We're just going to create a transcript of a video, convert it into a word document, and print it off. It's not. A, it's not like. It's not like we're doing rocket science. This None is... of what you said just made sense to me at all. I sell stuff and I ride motorbikes. I don't deal with computers and all that shit. But we can do that for you. That's all you need to know. It's very simple. By the time you've made a sales call, we'll have it done. I can answer my phone. I can send texts. I can Google stuff. It's very impressive. That's about it. That's all you need to do. I can navigate the 1914 and Alakazam websites. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. That's all I need to know. That's all you need to know. I can use that now. There you go. But you can't create a transcript and turn it into a script. No. Okay. Well, we'll do it for you, okay? Thank you. No problem. Right. Let's get back to work. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.